हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दी कैड कैम सी लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी दी सी एन सी लेथ एंड सम ऑफ द मैन्युअल पार्ट प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर लेथ ऑपरेशन सो वॉट आर दी डिफरेंट लेथ ऑपरेशन दैट वी विल सी फर्स्ट वी हैव फेसिंग एज यू कैन सी दिस डायग्राम ओके मोस्टली कवर्स ऑल पॉसिबल लेथ ऑपरेशन पॉसिबल ऑन सी एन सी so it starts with facing okay where we try to reduce the length of the uh, work piece okay then the chamfer then you have the straight turning then you have the taper turning we have the fillet and then there is going to be a spherical end okay so that is the uh, exterior cut operations possible on the uh, work piece some of the interior operations possible are internal taper then there is boring operation the okay, internal boring and external threading the okay, external threading so these are the different operations possible on cnc lathe operations okay and we will be looking to do most of these operations okay of course we'll be doing facing then we'll be doing straight and taper turning uh, along with the fillet okay all these are operations which reduce the diameter of the tool okay and facing reduces the length of the tool okay there is special operation which we carry out using a manual lathe machine okay by putting the machine into a lead screw mode that is the threading operation okay we will also see the threading operation that is external threading operation with the help of the repeat motion that is the canned cycle motion okay so we will use the canned cycle mode on the lathe machine center to carry out the external threading operation on the work piece okay now let us talk about the scenario okay we have already seen for milling machine centers okay we work in the uh, cartesian coordinate system wherein the top plane of the uh, machine or the work table okay is the xy plane and the depth of the work piece is attained with the help of the z coordinate which is the third coordinate okay and uh, when we come to the lathe operations or lathe machine okay uh, the the coordinate system changes and we no longer require three dimensional cartesian coordinate system to represent uh, the work piece along with the uh, other peripherals of the machine okay simply because with lathe machines we are only handling the cylindrical objects okay we are only handling cylindrical objects the complete work cycle is different uh, in milling machines we have seen the work piece remains stationary the tool rotates about itself and tool also translate about the uh, work piece to machine the work piece that is what we have seen and the type of operations that it can carry out includes drilling uh, all types of uh, drilling tapping boring etc and then all type of milling operations which starts from say contour milling side milling pocket milling slot milling uh, face milling etc so that that's what the uh, milling machine was capable to do now in lathe machines the scenario changes now we have a as you can see with this color this is the work piece that has been represented okay and this is the chuck or jaw uh, in which the work piece is being held okay now this is a uh, you can say section view of the uh, front section view of the uh, uh, arrangement wherein uh, this particular center line is is the axis okay axis line of the work piece so this is a cylindrical work piece okay this is a cylindrical work piece and this is also a cylindrical jaw okay cylindrical jaw with it has an arrangement to uh, hold the work piece tightly uh, uh, and adjust it with the help of uh, lead screw which is on the opposite side and then we do the fitting and then uh, this particular chuck is mounted on a spindle okay spindle is rotating okay it can rotate in clockwise direction it can rotate in anti clockwise direction and uh as as this particular work piece rotates okay we we bring the tool which is normally a single point cutting tool okay we bring the tool closer to the work piece okay if we are moving along this along the length 
okay along the length of the work piece okay then we are doing turning operations okay if we are moving along the radius of the work piece we are doing uh, sorry uh, yeah we are doing turning operation and uh, if we are do moving in this particular direction then we are reducing the length of the work piece okay reducing the length of the work piece so what happens work piece rotates okay work work piece rotates and the tool only translates okay now what are the possible two directions for the tool to translate in okay it has the z axis which is uh, located along the axis okay of the work piece and now uh, the situation over here is the axis of my chuck jaw or axis of my spindle okay should coincide with the axis of my work piece then and then only i will be getting an axis symmetric uh, you can say uh, machining on the work piece and we are only considering that these all are cylindrical work pieces okay cylindrical work pieces now we have uh, advanced uh, cnc legs okay wherein uh, by adjusting uh, few other settings which are which are modern settings okay we can also machine to certain extent extend non cylindrical parts okay but that is not the uh, point of discussion right now okay we are only discussing the simple uh, cnc lathe uh, settings so this along the axis okay along the axis of the work piece or along the axis of the spindle okay which which uh, covers the length of the work piece okay is z axis in this direction and in the radial direction of the work piece okay which covers the uh, x axis okay it covers the uh, x axis okay and that covers the total uh, cross section of the work piece okay cross section of the work piece or circular area of the work piece okay so this is the arrangement now uh, as i said okay motions so work piece is rotational so work piece is rotating it can rotate in clockwise direction it can rotate in anti clockwise direction or counter clockwise direction and tool is only translating okay tool is only translating when it is translating along the axis which is z axis okay it is we are doing the turning operation and when it is uh, translating along the uh, radial direction okay or along the perpendicular direction to the axis we are doing the facing operation okay we are doing the facing operation so if it translate in this direction okay continuously we are reducing the diameter okay we are reducing the diameter and the operation is called as turning operation and if the tool uh, keeps on translating in this direction then we are e effectively reducing the length of the work piece and we are doing the facing operation so that's what is discussed over here so z axis is parallel to the spindle axis as i said this is the axis spindle axis it is parallel to the spindle axis and most cases it coincides with the spindle axis okay that is what we we aim to achieve and x axis is perpendicular to the z axis which covers the radial dimension okay radial dimension of the work piece now in this arrangement uh, we can have let's say Uh, two origins okay uh, 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 out of that the first origin is called as the machine zero okay which is located at at the junction okay at the uh, junction where uh, the the boundary of the chuck or jaw ends and from where the the machining uh, work piece boundary starts okay now uh, there would be some portion of work piece which would be held inside this uh, chuck jaw okay but the machine zero will be at the surface okay at the radial surface of the uh, chuck jaw so uh, this is the machine zero okay in this uh, orientation i am I, i will be addressing all the lengths of my work piece as positive z dimension and any which way i i i represent my x is always going to be positive because from the origin it is going away from the origin and that is how i represent the radius of the work piece or diameter of the work piece so all the time my x is going to be positive okay and uh, if my machine zero okay i am going to work with the machine zero that is uh, origin at this particular location then all my length dimensions all my z dimensions for work piece will be positive okay the second is part zero the second is part zero so uh part 0 is also called as work coordinate okay now in that case the the uh the machine zero is located over here the part zero is transferred and it is located over here so it is located on the free end of the uh, work piece 
okay and generally selected on the part surface which is not faced okay so this is uh, selected uh, for for such a part surface which is not yet been faced okay so it has just been mounted on the uh, cnc lathe and there we will set our uh, origin and whatever dimension the length dimension i have to consider for my workpiece all those length dimensions will be negative okay all those length dimension will be negative so all my z dimensions will be negative and my x dimension that is the radial dimension remains to be positive all the time in both the type of uh, machine zero origin and part zero origin so i hope this concept is clear okay machine zero origin i have coordinate on the left okay the the junction that is on the uh, on the central uh, part of the chuck surface and uh, on the part zero i have the origin shifted onto the extreme right end of the workpiece okay that portion which is not yet been faced okay so uh, before starting the operation okay before starting the operation we will be setting this particular uh, origin okay now there are certain uh, commands okay which are required to be uh, known to us before we start programming the manual part programming in terms of the uh, the lathe uh, machining so the first command uh, is is the g28 okay g28 which stands for return home from intermediate point okay return home from intermediate point so the syntax is g28 u0 dot w0 dot okay so u0 w0 is the home position or a set point in terms of the lathe machine center okay remember we had a set point uh, in the milling machine center and since it was a three dimensional cartesian coordinate so we had to specify x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate okay now the lathe coordinate system is only a two dimensional coordinate system two dimensional axis symmetric coordinate system so it is only uh, feasible to specify only two coordinates that is u and w okay and remember we have studied about them that u and w are the secondary coordinates okay secondary coordinates so we specify the uh, g28 command with the help of secondary coordinate u0 w0 which happens to be the home position of the tool okay which happens to be the home position of the tool so it it looks like it, it let's say it is doing a turning operation straight turning operation it starts from uh, point 1 so this is a tool okay it comes in contact with the workpiece at point 2 okay it follows the straight line path till point 2 okay so it does a turning operation it reduces the diameter of the workpiece okay then it goes away okay then it goes away to the intermediate point 3 okay then it goes away to the intermediate point 3 so this intermediate point will have to program the tool in such a way that it goes away from the workpiece okay after completion after completion of this cut and from point 3 i will write g28 u0 dot w0 dot so from point 3 it will go back to its home position which is point 4 so return to home from point 3 okay remember we will never write a uh, return to home command directly from point 2 okay that is not feasible we first have to take the tool away from the workpiece uh, to some intermediate point and from that intermediate point we can take the tool back to the home position okay back to the home position it is also called as home zero it is also called as set point it is also called as home position of the two so these are uh, the some of the uh, requirements so the the tool path is like this from one to two two to three three to four and from four back to one okay not directly in contact uh, with the workpiece but just before one and then from there we will start the feed okay, of the tool and then slowly it will come in contact with the workpiece. So this is just an uh, example to showcase how G28 works. G28 means return to home position from intermediate point. Okay. Now some of the G codes that will be used okay, in the lathe machining uh, operations to certain extent they, these are same as milling machine centers. Okay, so we have already used G71 which is metric mode we have used g90 which is absolute positioning g91 which is incremental positioning then there are some motion modes command uh, g00 rapid mode g01 linear interpolation which is used for straight turning taper turning and facing then g02 clockwise circular interpolation g03 counter clockwise circular interpolation 
then there is g28 command that is uh, return to home okay which uh, we have already seen over here this is g28 okay so that means return to home position and then there is a special command g95 which we haven't used so far we haven't also used g28 so g28 we have been seeing for the first time g95 also we are seeing for the first time that is called as per revolution feed rate now when when it comes to the lathe machines okay the feed rate of the tool depends on the revolutions the workpiece is taking okay so uh, how many revolutions workpiece is uh, going under okay and then based on those revolutions how much uh, the tool is advancing okay so that is very crucial and that is the reason why the feed rate is measured in terms of per revolution uh, uh, manner and uh, that is basically uh, millimeters per revolution okay so there will be some length and that length is been traveled per how many revolutions so that is a per revolution feed rate g95 okay specifically used in lathe machine program now there are certain m codes which we will be using few are old codes but few are uh, specifically used while we are doing a lathe machine programming so m03 spindle on clockwise m04 spindle on counter clockwise m05 spindle off m07 coolant on you can have specific coolants flood type coolant mist type coolant with m08 and m09 that is coolant off then there are three uh, new codes that is m40 for low gear that is low speed m41 that is for medium gear and m42 for for the high gear or high speed so if you remember uh, the the spindle rotations okay spindle rotations uh, can be controlled with the uh, these these codes okay so low gear means the spindle will be rotating at low speed medium gear that is m41 means spindle will be rotating between some intermediate speed and m42 means spindle will be rotating at very high speed that means high gear and then i have m30 which is end of the program okay uh, s core that is speed core that is for the spindle rotations so spindle speed 1200 rpm spindle speed will be still revolutions per minute okay but f core that is the feed core so f.5 so f that means feed is 0.5 millimeters per revolution okay 0.5 millimeter per revolution so this is a considerable speed considering that let's say spindle is rotating at 1200 rpm okay 1200 rpm so 1200 revolutions per minute okay so if it takes one revolution okay and in while it takes one revolution the tool is going to translate by 0.5 millimeter so in a minute you can say 1200 multiplied by 0.5 okay 1200 multiplied by 0.5 those many uh, that much would be the distance that the tool will be traveling or translating in in a given specified time so it is considerable uh, feed rate okay considerable feed rate we have a different kind of a uh, tool code that is t0101 so it indicates that it is a turret uh, that we are going to select so now what happens is we, we select the turrets okay while while we are uh, working with the uh, lathe machines we we select what is the turret number that that we are going to use and then followed by again a two digit number so t01 first 01 stands for the turret number and second 01 stands for the tool offset value which is taken from register 01 so you can have t0102 you can have t0103 it depends okay it depends on that particular controller of that cnc lathe machine okay but generally the uh, turret code will be a four digit code okay turret code will be a four digit code unlike in milling machines we had tool numbers which were supposed to be two digit tool numbers starting from 0, 01 0, 02 0, 03 and so on okay so here we are going to refer uh, to them as turret numbers and then t followed by four digit code okay t followed by four digit code in which the first two digits will represent the turret number and second two digits will represent the tool offset value taken from that particular register uh, which is specified over there so t0101 stands for turret number one and tool offset value from register 01 so that is the that is the difference between some of the uh, milling machine codes and some of the lathe machine codes apart from that we have many common codes which are used in both uh, machining centers milling machining center as well as lathe machining center
now while we are working with say lathe machine there are x coordinate programming modes okay there are basically two programming modes while while we are working with lathe machines so uh, one is a diameter programming mode okay diameter pro programming mode now what happens is this is my z axis this is my x axis this is a tool okay now program motion in incremental mode so x is going to get varied by 0.5 amount so 0.5 mm let's say the uh, this is this was the previous uh, workpiece uh, orientation and the tool uh, was was touching here okay and tool did the uh, turning okay by the total depth of turning was 0.5 mm remember we are working in diameter mode so ultimately the original size of the workpiece was 60 mm and the final size after turning operation uh, is 59 mm so what has happened the tool has advanced by 0.5 mm that is the absolute value of advancement of tool so tool has advanced 0.5 mm okay but in turn since my workpiece is rotating when tool advanced by 0.5 mm the total diameter reduction happened was 1 mm or by 1 mm so size of shaft reduced by 1 mm and this is a normally selected mode so normally if nothing is specified okay we will be working with diameter programming mode in which the tool advancement is let's say if it is it is of value x okay then the diameter reduction happens by value two times of that x okay so if let's say tool advances 0.5 mm diameter reduces by 1 mm okay so that is the uh, diameter programming mode and the second one is a radius programming mode so what happens here is okay program motion in again incremental mode so total movement of the tool is by 1 mm and actual motion of the tool is 1 mm okay here instead of 0.5 now it is 1 mm remember we are now working with radius programming mode okay so actual motion of tool is 1 mm and size of shaft reduced by 2 mm so when it it goes let's say 1 mm okay we are working with uh, radius programming mode okay we are working with radius programming mode so when it moves by 1 mm okay now we are talking about the radius reduction okay radius reduction so 1 mm of the radius it is it is going to cut so let's say uh, the total reduction of the diameter will be uh, say from 60 it will go do, go down to 58 okay and in diameter we were uh, reducing the diameter and in radius we are directly reducing the radius okay so in these two okay diameter programming and uh, radius programming the more famous programming mode is diameter programming mode if nothing is specified about the programming modes in the x coordinates for the lathe machines okay we will go ahead with the diameter programming mode by default okay now again uh, few repeated motions are possible in uh, lathe machine programming so those are again covered in the cant cycles on lathe so what are the available cant cycles that we will see very quickly so cant cycles are also available for lathes cant cycles are available for following operations as you can see rough turning and boring finish turning and boring rough facing finish facing chamfering and thread cutting so almost all the operations that we saw okay in the first or second slide okay all the operations can be worked with cant cycles because more or less they require repeat motion okay more or less they require repeat motion or repeat translatory motion of the tool okay so that is the reason why uh, they had to be set in in this particular manner so one such cant cycle we will see which is a threading cant cycle on lathe so as you can see uh, the code that is used for threading cant cycle is g78 okay now that also we haven't seen we are seeing this for the first time okay now this is the uh, end result that is required so this is the tool position before the uh, threading starts remember how we used to carry the threading operation on the manual lathe machine we used to uh, put the lathe machine in a lead screw mode wherein uh, the the motion can be repeated okay for a single pass then we again take the tool back to the starting location again it carries into the lead screw okay again uh, and and every time uh the the uh, tool 
is is advanced in terms of its radial distance by a uh, very small margin and eventually the depth of cut the total depth of cut for the thread is achieved okay so there are certain parameters this alpha beta values alpha betas are called as uh, safety distances or linear clearances beta is for the uh, retrieval of the tool and alpha is to accelerate lathe carriage okay so accelerate lathe carriage so from alpha uh, there will be some safety distance alpha from which the tool will start its feed okay from which the tool will start its feed and slowly it will advance towards the workpiece and then it will come in contact with the workpiece okay and beta is a safety distance which is required so that tool doesn't come in contact with the chuck jaw okay so it's a safety distance as far as the left end uh, is concerned and this is a left margin you can say and alpha you can say is a right margin okay if we are working with uh, cnc simulation softwares okay these alpha betas are are taken as beta is taken as left margin of the workpiece and alpha is taken as the right margin of the workpiece if you are working with the left spindle machine okay left spindle orientation machine now can cycle threading block as you can see over here n that is sequence number followed by g78 which is a g code for uh, threading can cycle then i have x which is the minor diameter remember minor diameter now how i am going to calculate minor diameter okay i have a formula to calculate the minor diameter okay so minor diameter is this okay minor diameter is this okay then i will have to enter the value let's say if my uh, uh, thread depth is let's say total depth required is uh, 1.5 and my uh, say da, the the major diameter is 26 and thread depth required is 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by 2 that would be the minor diameter so 23 will be the minor diameter that is how i calculate minor diameter okay then i have the length of the thread so z followed by the number will indicate the length of the thread so this is a length of the thread as you can see over here this is the total length of the thread okay followed by the i okay so i is a keyword so difference in thread radius from one end to the other end okay difference in thread radius from one end to the other end normally we are doing straight threadings okay there are possibilities that you can also have taper threads okay or threading on a tapered uh, say workpiece but then you will have to give some value to i otherwise this i value remains to be zero so for straight threads okay for tapered threads i is not zero okay so we will be working with straight threads to begin with then followed by the keyword k so height of the thread so k followed by number is going to denote the height of the thread total height of the thread followed by d again a keyword followed by the number so depth of cut for first pass okay so this is a depth of cut for the first pass okay and how many pass to carry out will be decided based on this particular first pass depth of cut so if let's say my k value is 1.5 and i gave d as 0.5 so you can say normally three passes will be carried out okay three passes will be carried out or minimum two passes can also be carried out okay so first will be 0 0.5 remain remaining is 1 mm that 1 mm can be taken in a single pass or 1 mm can be taken in two passes or that 1 mm can be taken in five passes okay depends how we are setting okay depends how we are setting so that calls for a that calls for a finished cycle as well okay let's not go into that detail okay then followed by the keyword f which is the lead of thread okay lead of thread so lead of thread is basically the thread length okay single thread length from this point to again the second point so this is the lead of thread okay this is the total depth okay this d is the first pass okay depth of cut for first pass this capital d or small d whatever you uh, you can denote it okay this is the total thread length this is the minor diameter and this a is the thread angle okay a is the thread angle so these many details are required to be provided so that we can carry out the uh, threading can cycle on lathe machine okay lathe machine so we have seen so far beta which is the left margin or the retrieval the the margin kept for the retrieval of the tool or safety margin kept so that 
the tool doesn't come in contact with the chuck jaw and alpha is a right margin which is required so that tool can be accelerated from that value and slowly it can come in contact with the work piece and then we have all these uh, threading can cycle which is started by g78 okay which is started by g78 okay moving ahead we'll take one example okay we'll take one example so here as you can see beta okay this is the diagram this is the end result which we want to achieve m26 cross 3 okay m26 cross 3 so 26 is the major diameter okay 3 is the uh, depth of the thread okay total depth of the thread so you can say uh, or the 3 uh, is the is the total depth of the thread so uh, eventually we will calculate the uh, per thread depth from this value then i have the left margin beta as 10 okay 30 is the z that is the length of the thread okay origin we will be taking as part origin okay part origin so uh, z value the if i have to address the uh, length of the thread i will have to denote it as z minus 30 because my z zero is over here okay z zero is over here so let us quickly look at the uh, manual part program for the same operation so i will have my usual percent sign then followed by the program number i have x0 along center line of spindle and z0 which is the part end as mentioned over here so this is my origin then g28 u0 w0 so return to home zero okay so this g28 will take the tool to the home zero uh, then g00 g95 g71 so what i am doing rapid mode feed rate per revolution so I have changed the feed rate uh, unit to per revolution feed rate and metric mode. Okay, metric mode. Then the M40 T0101. So low gear turret 01 and tool offset value from register 01. Okay, turret 01 and tool offset value will be taken from register 01. So this is just like a tool change command. Okay, we we used to use M06. Okay, so instead of that we are Uh, right now we are not changing basically we are just selecting the same turret okay and and setting the speed for the turret to low speed since the threading operation should be carried out at low speed okay so m40 is a low gear or low speed then s400 so spindle speed is specified okay m03 the m03 m07 so m03 for the clockwise uh, rotation of the spindle and m07 for the Uh, coolant on okay m07 for the coolant on then uh, i i will start the motion or i will start the tool motion uh, g00 i will bring the tool to x27 z5 okay x27 z5 now x27 if you remember uh, okay we are by default going to work in the uh, diameter mode okay we are by default going to work in the diameter mode so x27 is fairly away from the work piece okay fairly away from the work piece somewhere over here okay and then it is going to come down okay do the first thread cut come down do the second thread cut go back come down do the third uh, cut and so on okay and so on so that is how it is going to advance so x27 z5 okay remember z positive means we haven't yet uh, brought the tool in contact with the work piece so i am now writing the g78 so threading can cycle on so g78 x23 is going to be the minor diameter so how i have calculated the minor diameter x26 is given so m26 is given so m26 multiplied by the uh, 0.8 okay 0.8 Uh, that that can be done or you can say the depth total depth is given as 3 so 3 divided by 2 okay so it is 1.5 or you can say 26 minus that uh, 3 will be 23 so that is how i am going to calculate the minor diameter over here you can have other formula to calculate minor diameter value or else normally what happens is you will be given the minor diameter value okay so to be more precise to go ahead with these nomenclatures it is always better to know the minor diameter value so here the minor diameter value is 
okay z minus 30 so z 0 is this z minus 30 that means i am covering the length of the thread okay then i 0 it's a straight thread straight cut thread then k is 1.5 okay k is 1.5 that is the uh, height of the thread okay and d 0.5 that is the depth of cut for the first pass okay depth of cut for the first pass then f3 that is 3 millimeter per revolution that is the feed rate and a60 so this is the angle also mentioned okay 60 degree the trade angle okay so this threading can cycle will run for three times okay threading can cycle will run for three times so every time uh, the first pass then again the second pass will be again for 0.5 value third pass will again for 0.5 value till it attains the total height of the thread that is 1.5 okay till it attains the total height of the thread that is 1.5 and eventually it will also attain the x23 okay eventually it will also attain x equal to 23 so this threading can cycle will run uh, similar way as as we put the mas lathe machine manual lathe machine in a lead screw mode and we continue till the total thread is cut okay so that will ensure that will be ensured by this threading can cycle on the lathe machine with the help of g78 code okay then see this particular block will be carried out for multiple times okay till the thread threads are made on the workpiece okay and then it will come out of the can cycle mode once it it attains this 23 okay remember this 23 is a end condition the z minus 30 is end condition okay it has to attain those end condition values based on these advancement values okay and every time feed rate is going to be 3 millimeter per revolution okay it will come out of the uh, can cycle mode okay it will go to g00 rapid mode okay go to x27 z5 so it will again go to the initial position okay then i will use the uh, return to home command that is g28 so u0 w0 and also i will switch off the spindle and i will switch off the coolant supply as well and then my program ends okay with m30 and then i have percent size so that is the end of the program uh, so we have seen so far the uh, lathe operations okay how the coordinate system works with the uh, lathe programming lathe machines or lathe machining center okay what are the x uh, direction or x coordinate programming modes that is diameter programming mode and radius programming mode and what are the various g codes m codes and what are the similarities and what are the new additions uh, of the of these g codes and m codes uh, for for lathe machining centers and we have also seen the can cycle for threading okay on the uh, lathe machines so i hope you have understood this <coughs> okay there will be more such interesting content coming on on this uh, cad cam ca lecture series okay till then uh, just stay tuned for more such interesting content on cam thank you very much